Hey guys, good morning. This is the second standard that we're gonna cover this week. Uh, there's a lot of overlap between um, NS5 and NX, NS6, which you'll see in just a minute. But um, so these are very similar and we've already covered, previewed a lot of the material with a coordinate plane. So this week should be pretty okay. Um, and hopefully we'll be back together by next week. So NS6 says, understand a rational number as a point on the number line. A rational number is any real number that can be written as a fraction. It can be positive, it can be negative. It's essentially any number you can think of is going to be a rational number. The only example I can think of of an irrational number would be pi. Um, it repeats forever, it can be written as a fraction. So um, any number you can think of, decimals, fractions, whatever, we can put those on a number line, that's a rational number. We are going to extend our number line diagrams and coordinate axes from previous grades to represent points on the line and in the place, in the plane with negative number coordinates. So this kind of has two parts. The first part says um, I can recognize opposite sides of numbers as locations opposite of zero on the number line, which essentially just means that negative two on the number line is at the exact opposite location of positive two. They are both, positive two is two units to the right of zero. Negative two is two units to the left of zero. Um, I think we have a pretty good grip on that altogether, um, putting negative numbers on the number line. So I have a question um, that poses what happens when I have a negative negative? Well, if I have negative two, and I know that negative two is, I have gone in the opposite direction. So positive two is to the right, negative two is to the left. Well, guys, the opposite, this literally means the opposite of the opposite of two. So if negative two is the opposite of two, then the opposite of negative two is, guess what? Positive two. So a negative negative is always positive. And that's why, because it's essentially this negative sign here means the opposite of. So this is the opposite of negative two. So wherever negative two is, that's its opposite. The second um, thing that we kind of need to understand is it says, what's the opposite of zero? Well, zero is zero units to the right and zero units to the left. It's just right there in the middle. So the actual opposite of zero is zero itself. Zero is its own opposite. So that kind of covers the first part of the standard. The second part of the standard is to basically understand that this X axis and the Y axis are essentially number lines. This is a horizontal number line. This is a vertical number line. And as such, we can place positive and negative numbers using those number lines. So uh, the first, I want to show you how these, these coordinates are really all reflections of one another um, across one or both planes. So the first number we're going to start with, quadrant one, this is quadrant one. In quadrant one, this is the quadrant that we learned about in fifth grade. All of the numbers in quadrant one are positive. So uh, two with an X coordinate of two and a Y coordinate of three, both positive would be in the quadrant one. I'm going over two and I'm going up three and I'm going to make my mark. And I'm going to use different colors so you can see how that number changes based on the sign. Okay, so in quadrant two, we have X values that are negative and Y coordinates that are positive. So the first number tells us how many to move horizontally. This is negative two. So we're gonna move back negative two and we're still going up three. So in this case, we have a reflection across the Y axis where our x value has become negative. So this number is the opposite of that number when we're talking about the x coordinate. Now the y coordinate was the same. If we change both of these numbers to negative, we're gonna find ourselves in quadrant three where the, the negative um, y coordinate and the x coordinate are both negative. So to do that, I'm gonna come back two and down three and I'm gonna make my mark. So essentially that, that is a reflection across both axes. So we're gonna reflect once to get to this point and then again to get to this point. Um, we can also only have a negative Y coordinate. 
If we have a negative y coordinate, we're going to find ourselves here in quadrant four. So this would be a reflection across the x axis. Okay, so um, our x coordinate is going to be the same. Two, we're going to find ourselves on the same line, but we're going to go down three instead of up three. So one, two, three. And that, that would be a reflection um, from this, this point across the x-axis. This quadrant two is a reflection with the same values across the y-axis. And then in quadrant three, we would have a reflection across both axes. Um, so this is basically how this number moves around based on the positive and negative signs. Um, those, they are all um, essentially opposites. Some of them are opposites of the other. Negative two is the opposite of two, so it's a reflection on the axis. No, um, negative three is a opposite of three, so it causes a reflection across the axis. And essentially, you just need to know how to plot those points based on their sign um, on a coordinate grid. Uh, let me know what questions you have.